everybody, you're here on Hafla TV, but on a pretty unusual channel. For all you know, there's always just the two English channels, Hafla TV 1 and Hafla TV uh, 2. But today we have so many games at the same time, which forces me to cast on my private channel, which is just usually for subscribers and viewers, gameplay, beta testing, all that stuff. But yes, in rare occasions, we actually do have games here. Either way, this is Join Dota League Season 3. Division 2 Europe, your family is playing against Bennett plus 5. That's pretty much what we got here. I have never seen Bennett plus 5. It's the first time I see them at all. I don't know if they played GDA before, if they are for, like newly formed. For me, I have no idea. I really have no idea. But nevertheless, we're going to cast them. Your family, obviously... Um, we know them. Tied onto. I think I've casted them once last week. The rest was cast by all the other Hefla TV casters. But yeah, uh, <laughs> what else is there to say? Not much. Uh, we are a small stream today. Not too many viewers, which means I can actually respond to whatever is going on in the chat. I, sh I think I should at least. Either way, let's look in the draft and see what we got there. Doom, Razor, Panda, and the Lycan being banned out. That means, okay. <sighs> everything along the meta but of course it makes space for a nice combination such as the Void and the Sky of Mage. There is an awesome synergy, in synergy between those two heroes obviously we have the big fat blue bubble called Chronosphere and that shiny thing you should not stand in the Mystic Flare like those like those two they can really ruin your day that's just a fact. Chronosphere and Mystic Flare always means minus yeah. one and then Faces Void mostly still has time to make it minus two in a fight. On the other hand, we have two tanky heroes being picked up by Bennett. The Viper has been picked, okay. So, a hero that is at least ha has some inherent uh, magic resistance as such. Titanta coming out. Tanky at least uh, against the physical part, but, well, the huge ravage. That's what's interesting. It's also our candidate for the offline. And, yep, seeing, like, looking at those two picks, we have to see what's uh, coming out now at the second ban stage because. Um, we have to see. Both teams could still make a turn for the more pushy setup, but right now Bennett 5, they just ban out the Earthshaker, which means they don't want to have this against them, especially the laning, because then even a, a Titan can be just crippled down with a nice pluck all over the, the lane. And there we go. Yeah, the pusher are getting, the pushers getting banned out right now. Death Prophet is out. The Pugna is out. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rasta is the next one. <laughs> and someone is asking, what team is Kawai? Uh, Kawai is not playing here. Kawai you can find on Hefla TV 1 at Twitch, our first and main channel here of the Hefla TV label. This is another game. This is Family vs. Bennett 5. So I hope we clarify this. And something else? Nope. Czech and Slovak play the best. Well, we will see. <laughs> And please read Kure with K. Oh, not Cure. Yeah, obviously, Kure, not Cure. Yeah, don't worry, I'm gonna pronounce it the best way I can. Okay, that, now that we all <laughs> clarified all this in the chat, we are just looking at what's going on on the draft. The second ban stage is done, and the Dream Protect is actually getting banned out. That's quite an interesting one, because... Uh, so far, this hero is quite useless in the current meta. There's just a handful of uh, dream protectors that actually make it through. But let's see. Oh, and please don't post any crazy links in the chat like if I don't know what it is I am pretty much forced to ban you or time you out so that those links are not seen either way the Tinker is coming out now that actually gets interesting so we have already the Chrono we already have the Scarif Mage who puts damage inside that Chrono and now the Tinker is coming up after they use pretty much like more than a minute like 
time to consider whatever they want to pick. Now we have marching machines, rocket laser, everything coming in inside the chrono. And that actually hurts. Plus, of course, Scarif Mage is b bursting, like, or helping the burst as well with the Ancient Seal. That's quite... I don't know, like, I'm, I would be scared if I'm Bennett 5. I mean, having, like, now two tanky heroes and even Ventral Spirit is a relatively tanky hero because he has a high base of strength gain as such. He gains really a lot of HP by level, but let's see in what role he is anyway. The Ventral Spirit, of course, can be utilized to sort of counteract the Faceless Void, um, <laughs> like, stall some time by swapping in and out, etc. Maybe getting a target that's under focus out of the Chrono. That's, of course, interesting, but it always means that maybe you sacrifice yourself there. But in the end, that's kind of what a, a support Vengeful Spirit has to do. Which team is Kawai? I already told you. Team Kawai is here on Hefla TV. Uh, on Hefla TV 1, not here on Hefla Moog. There we go. So I'm just writing in chat. So people are actually realizing what's going on. Delicious being picked up here as a third one. Makai, that's definitely interesting. It's another damage source into the Chronosphere. It's also, of course, nice bouncy bouncy with a Chain Frost. Let's see how lucky he is on those ones. I mean, if it's a perfect Chrono, then it might even be an even better Chain Frost. He is, of course, quite a nuisance in the, in the laning phase for Bennett 5 here because, well... A lot of XP is taken away. He can support someone, he can harass you out just with all those frost blasts all the time. From level 2 on, they really start to hurt. But yep, yeah, talking about more tanky heroes now that we have the Wraith King coming out. So Vampiric Aura is there, the Reincarnation and the Stuns. I'm not sure if he is in a support role or not. That We will see that in the fifth one, but it could be either way, of course. And now it's all about the last. The last buns are coming. Storm Spirit? Okay. I guess that's the perfect ban you want to do if you don't want to see Tinker being in trouble. Like Tinker obviously uh, needs to be protected so he can just blink into the trees so the Storm Spirit is not coming along and just grabbing him and then having all the follow up and well on the other side to be honest I have no idea what else they would ban. Okay they say a bristle back. Yeah sure why not. It would be one, one big fat tanky hero that could tank a lot of things. I mean, if he's under focus, maybe that's the perfect setup for the Faceless Void, for example. Yep, I can definitely see that, that one happening. The question is now, does your family even want to go more greedy? To be honest, I don't think they need it. I think they can even safe lane that Void, get an offliner right now. Like being supported and either by the Lish, for example. Maybe if there's not too, pressure, too much pressure applied by Bandit 5, they might even be able to, to dual lane this and just rotate in and out, even support Tinker a bit in mid if necessary, if there's a lot of if there's a, a lot of pressure on a Tinker, but let's see. It is about the fifth one. They still got 45 seconds time and it seems like they really want to use them. They're quite hesitant on what's to come. But at, um, at the same time I'm also thinking about what, what Bennett 5 could do. Because right now if that's a farming Grave King, we need another support. Then Viper mid, Titan offlane. That would be already a double double stun tri lane to come there. Might be interesting. But also for your family, we could see now that Delish is actually the offliner, which we have seen in the last some days. And we get a second support now for the Faceless Void into the tri lane. That is also an option we have. And why not? Like Lich offline, we saw the last days, it actually works. It's quite a nuisance even. He just comes close, you just get those frost blasts and he's going back here, sacrifice and whatnot. It's a troll warlock. Okay. Now that really looks like dual laning. This really looks like dual lane. Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. I'm really curious, like once we're done here with the draft how they lane it. I mean, there's there's a lot of a lot of possibilities how they could lane this. This could be even utility void, troll mid and tinker safe lane. Even that would be an option. Even that is an option. So we really have to see what they go for. Like we have to see what player picks up which hero, and then we will see it. 
Enchantress is the last one on Bandit 5. That puts the Rave King in a, sub, uh, in a, in a carrier role. That's quite interesting. So it's a Vengeful Spirit, Enchantress, Rave King, Trilane with the Tide Hunter and the Offline Viper in the mid. That's the only reasonable laning I can see in this team at the moment. And sure, why not? Enchantress with the right creeps could go and rotate in. Maybe Ensnare, maybe another stun followed up by Rayfire Blast and Magic Missile or either initiated uh, by them. Sure, that definitely works. Also applies some pressure on the tower. Maybe I would have seen a Chen... Uh, rather a Chen, just for the fact that maybe you have that heal against the all the crazy ultimates of like family, like Tinker Rockets have to be counteracted, Chain Force has to be counteracted, maybe heal someone who's into the Chrono. So a Chen would have been a bit more presence in my opinion. Then again, of course, the Enchantress can do a lot more damage just by default because Test of Faith is always a bit RNG, and the Impeti, then in the end, the Impetus Ultimate could really transform into a ton of damage. Either way, overlays are swap. We're looking at the teams. They just have a pause right now and we just introduced them really fast. We have Kure, Kure, not Kure, Kure <laughs> on the Leish. We have Flado on the Tinker, then uh, Kranich on the Faceless Void. We have, oh my god, Sun One, Buddy and Amp Doyle. What the hell is this name? On the Troll Warlord and then we have Fendril the Fag. Okay, that's that's an interesting name. Fendril the Fag on the Sky of Mage. On the other side, at the moment here is a four-man gank train, pretty much Lizard playing the Enchantress Blacks on the Vengeful Spirit Taboo, playing the Rave King. United is on the Viper, and the one not joining that train is at the moment Nemarianos LFT on the Titanter. So let's see what's coming here. I mean, they already like if they find the Sky of Mage, that's that's an easy kill to go for. And is there a magic missile? No, for that one they have to actually dive that tier one tower. Maybe something you don't want to do, but nice one here. We have already a ward behind the tower. Now they see the troll warlord, but of course there is no slow, there are no stuns, so by now family knows where they are. Like how does that ward actually look? That's quite an interesting ward, like in Chinese Japanese style. Okay, definitely like it. The second one of the Observer Ward is here, just for the bottom rune vision, of course, in that direction. On the other side we have, so far, pretty much nothing. The Observer Wards are held back. Tinker actually has one Observer Ward. I don't know if that is for the mid, but, oh, Lizard. Like, now Kranich just saw you there, and... Wait, what? What did he just... Was there an item on the crown? Oh my goodness! I think there was an item on the crown. I'm not sure what it was, but he shot something. It was not the void. It was something else. But I didn't see it. Either way, let's see what's coming. The creeps are spawning, and we're going into it. So... <laughs> and yes, I'm always trying to reply a bit to the chat. They, you say they troll with the troll. I don't think that's a... Oh, look at it. The right click's already coming on the troll. The second one is to follow out. All about the right clicks. This might actually be enough for a first blood. One more needed. And yes, the Rave King is the one who gets that first blood. Beautifully done. That double damage on the Vengeful Spirit. Easy going. And this is this is the advantage of having a double stun. It's just easy, pop easy. And yes, I was actually right about the dual lanes. Like, both teams are going for uh, dual lanes. Or actually, just family is going for it. Well, because Lizard is at the moment um, just busy here in the jungle but the question is where does he rotate so far he has a stun which could go of course in the mid and viper he needs the poison attack but first of all he needs to be level two for that now he's rotating in the conqueror is ready there's actually a courier but now he sends the courier back and now flado is there a stun the stun is not landing he's too slow with that one so he gets a hit and a laser in his face that means he pretty much has to go back or has to go keep on farming in the jungle because it's just too risky to go for more, but that was kind of disappointing because I actually thought with that stun, maybe it still has enough time for the Viper to come in, poison attack, etc. Like this dual lane, by the way, I really like it. So far, the Titan is quite okay -ish because he keeps in the area in the vicinity, getting some CS with the Anchor Smash. But as soon as this Lish, as soon as this Lish is level 3, which is gonna happen pretty much soon in the next or in the creep wave after then he's gonna harass a ton of, on this titan and so far he's already through his tangos and then it's only a self left so let's see what's coming there so far we have the enchantress oh is there a stun maybe on a sky of mage nope the stun is actually on the troll lord warlord but the axes are flying and they don't have a follow up because the silence on the rave king that's too bad because they had it in snare they had a stun on the conqueror 
All they needed was that Red Fire Blast. But Fendro, good play by him. Without his silence there, this would have been an easy one. In the mid, we gotta compare this 9 6 at the moment on the Tinker and 6 3 on the Viper. Now Viper's starting to do some harass damage there. Yes, now decided, yep, yeah, for two points in Corrosive Skin. And let's see what we got here. Like the two creeps. Okay, just taking care of that creep wave. Also interesting. Pulling it to the other camp. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that stun. And is it actually happening? No, it's not really happening now. Oh, Blacks has the vision here on the troll. Does he stun him? No, he does not stun him. The stun is actually coming on the troll while the other stu stun was on the Skyrim Mage. They tried to box him in, but he ate through the side. Now he's slowing them, but oh my god, there's the vision here on the Skyrim Mage. There's nothing they can do. Now they're just surrounding him. And yes, that's pretty much it. That's the second kill on him, and maybe they want to even go for more. The troll, oh, he's trying to eat through, but oh, they just found it. The magic missile. Blacks, what you doing? Where's the magic missile? Now they have the vision, but it's not enough. Both. Oh, why is he not stunning him? I don't understand. I really don't understand why they just don't stun him. They want to preserve that that ward at the moment, I guess. Sentry ward against sentry ward. So he's just tanking the creeps. Okay, <laughs> that's that's an interesting choice. I would have preferred that kill, obviously, on the troll, but they decide against it. Tight Hunter, out of regeneration, but having a re ring of regen right now. Problem is, of course, that Lich. Sac next sacrifice is in 10 seconds, and yes, Tight Hunter really has a problem. That buys a lot of space, or creates a lot of space for the Void. 19 CS at the moment, 19.8. So he's having quite a decent time. Still a self left, and well, there it is. You see it, but there's, is there a time walk? Yes, and now it's all about the bashes. Where are the bashes? He needs bash anchor smash, reducing the damage, but there is the bash actually. But unfortunately, no follow up I, uh, frost blast. That would have been a kill on a Titan, but he's getting away, but he's being forced back into the fountain. And someone said 3 2 2. Yeah, I always agree. <laughs> 3 2 2. Best thing. 3 2 2 means life. Either way, it's at the moment two up for Bennett, but there a double damage venture spirit. That's how they got the first blood already. But yep, they're just running through the tower. The Halber Smasher actually almost dying to the tower. I don't know if Fendro would be interested in. He could have gotten that that Halber Smasher kill by just one arcane bolt. Usually a support should be happy about that, but yep, he did not go for that. Let's see. I mean, at least it buys some time for the Troll Warlord. He's at the moment in range form, Stout Shield. I mean, uh, Pullman Shield, actually, he upgraded it, and well, as long as he's alone against the Rave King, it should be all fine, but he's not alone. Black's already back, so they have that double setup. The only problem is, of course, if they get all hit by the Axis, then we have a problem with... We really have a problem with the the right click damage coming on the on the troll. They need to outlast it or like follow him then even deeper, which means diving the tower, and that's not always a good choice. But either way, lizard and blacks farming the enemy jungle, so that's quite effective as such because they can rotate between both lanes. They have the troll as an option, they have the tinker as an option. Viper in the mid, oh, the laser harass is real, but Viper is also bottle crying. What's coming in that courier? Ah, uh, salve and boots. Oh, actually, for whom? For who was that salve? Oh, he used it right away. That's why I didn't see it. Okay, never mind. I'm blind. But yeah, so he's up and oh, is there maybe a slow on that troll warlord? No, it's so just some harass, shockwave harass coming out as well. I think the enchantress is gonna creep skip here, so they push that tower. I mean, there's still two creeps left. Two. Two heroes who just hit that tower. It's not quite enough, but the next creep wave is already coming. The Rave King, when in doubt, he still has reincarnation, so they might actually want to do this. So Bennett securing the tower. And there's also nature attendance. If they want to, they can just hug each other a bit, cuddle for warmth, and just get the nature attendance heal up and run in. But let's see. Top. Titan having the stick, which is always good against the 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 Lich because he's spamming permanently two spells, then later on even three. So getting free charges all the time, which is a nice way to heal, obviously. He is level 6 now, so we have a Ravage. Whenever we see the next rotation by the Titan, then we might actually yeah, see that Ravage coming. Someone is asking again, where's the livestream of Kawaii vs. Fab 5? It's on Hefla TV 1. 
have Flat TV One. The three English channels I have Flat TV One, two, and oh my God, they go here for the courier. That might actually be a courier and the Tinker Kill. There's one more. That was one hit missing on the courier. I can't even believe it. This one is surviving. At the same time, they get the kill top. That was delish actually with the last frost blast getting that kill off the Titan Hunter. There was no ravage used, so he did not decide for using this one. But at least they get the Tinker kill on the mid and the courier almost. Almost, but it means a second tower, so that's good news for Bannard because eight minutes in, it's it's definitely looking good for them. The Rave King at the moment, almost a K ahead of that void, just because of all the kills and the towers they got. Now a second tower in the mid is is up or rather down. So let's see what's coming here. Marching machines, of course, protecting now the towers. This is a level four marching machines, but the problem is with the uh, Lizard here at the moment farming the side camps. There's also not much position uh, where the Tinker can farm. That's that's the biggest downside. Like even even this camp now, it's a triple stack, but there is a sentry ward, and I really don't know. Like he's probably gonna try to stack this, but then he will notice like that he either failed or that there must be a ward. So let's see what's coming. We still have the vengeful spirit. We still have the tinker here somewhere. A slow plus stun. There is a bit follow up damage missing. Oh, with the Viper having haste shown. Actually, he's going top because the Titan is under attack. The Chain Frost, I just saw it coming out, but oh my god, Viper, that might be. Nope, it's definitely. Oh, let's see. He doesn't have an interrupt, so that's not really worth it to chase or do even any further damage. So, Titan are going down the second time. This time it was with Chrono and Chain Frost. That was too fast. Again, no Ravage use. To be honest, if they wanted to. I think they could start pushing or maybe even gank the Tinker. I don't know what more farm the Titan that requires or maybe they can even rotate and just shut down that void farming. These are two options. I just don't see a reason why the Titan should just stay, stay there. Well, but as a stun here on the troll, follow up stun by the magic missile. Even though the axes are out, he will go down for sure. The last hit, yes, will come there by the Wraith King. Getting the tower acro off and with that creep, even with the Hellbell Smasher, they can go for the tower. Nature attendance being out and... oh. The acro, uh, some damage here on the Hellbell Smasher by Fendril, but you gotta be careful. If a stun is coming out on you, Fendril, you are pretty much dead. He's trying to get rid of that Hellbell Smasher, but still one more, and the creeps are actually getting it. So that's that's too bad. Fendril still trying to be around, but yep, you can just tank those creeps, and in the meantime, all the other creeps they are going for it. Courier flying in. These are the PTs for the Enchantress, and let's see, bottle self use top. That's not working, and this means third tower going down here. 11 minutes in, we're looking already at the net worth. We're with this tower down in a minute, I'll show you the graphs for the first time. But it's for your family, it's, it's not looking too good. Like two kills I had for B5, and like all the time, like this pressure on the tower permanently rotating. Now rotating into the mid here with a smoke. Maybe into the martial machines, but of course if the Tinker is not careful enough... Oh my god, now they got vision, there's the magic missile here on Fentro. Now it's all about damage. Unfortunately, they are not level 6, but the swap is coming in. Where is the right click? There's the right click. I mean, the Vengeful is gonna, yep, die as well as the Enchantress for it. But, well... So in the end, actually, family making the better move there. Faces Void now, coming into the mid. What is he going for? Hand of Midas. Like, you gotta be careful, though. Like, he's 10 gold away from the f uh, Hand of Midas. Like, he doesn't really wanna... Uh, die here, but yep, tower, everything, viper, but there's a rotation, it is the raping actually coming in, not, it's not the one who we expect, where's the ravage, the ravage train is not coming, but at least with the help of the tower, they get more, the only problem is now, now they are being chased, maybe they want to go for the tinker, no, they should go for the tinker, the damage so far being backtracked, and now, yeah, reincarnation will pop, I don't know why he's running away, actually, he might survive this, okay, that's quite interesting, still, this guy, where is his TP? His TP and the Ravage, that would have uh, been a free man Ravage. Not saving the Viper, but guaranteeing at least two follow-up kills. Maybe on the Tinker, but he just keeps on farming. They want him to have a Blink Dagger, like badly. Like, all the focus is going on a Titan having a Blink Dagger. I don't know if that's a good choice, because getting two kills in the mid and then rotating back top, that might have been actually more gold than farming this one creep wave in the meantime, but... Sure, they go for the decision. Either way, I'm gonna show you the crafts as promised. We have a K lead when it comes to experience uh, for Banner 5. When we look at the gold craft, however, with all these towers and that one kill advantage they have at the moment, it's a bit more. We are looking at almost 7.5k uh, advantage. But let's see. Top. Void coming in. No chrono ready. 
but we have to slow. Oh, that poor Titan, uh, he's again. Does he use his Ravage? No, he does not. Like, it's... It's just not working out. Like, Ravage not used, no damage done on them, but at least the rotation comes in. Troll Warlock is the focus. He is for sure going down. Now the question is, do they have to face this void? There. Oh, do they have vision? Maybe with the Wave of Terror. With the Wave of Terror, they get actually the vision up. It's three seconds, but... He's not even bothering. Wave of Terror? Wave of Terror? Wave of Terror? No. Okay. Never mind. Now the Void is actually in a perfect position, waiting for the Chrono. I don't know why he doesn't use that Wave of Terror, but he doesn't want to. The Cliff being used, they just wait till someone actually rotates in here, and the Chrono is gonna get on their asses. There we go. Triple Chrono. Unfortunately over the tower, but who cares? They get one, and maybe now two. Oh, do they? They focus on the Skyrath Mage, but of course the Viper not doing too much damage, because, yep, Axis and everything. The first Ravage of this game, I can't even believe my eyes there, it's actually coming out. The troll going down immediately, the Tinker actually coming in. Marching Machines, Rockets, but is that enough? The stun has been on the void, but he's going out. Oh my god, that Tide Hunter. You really gotta be careful, but oh, there is the stun now. But the, the Rockets, gladly, is not hitting the Tide Hunter, but at least that one Rocket and uh, gets the kill on the Wraith King. Actually, it was the Frost Blast finishing off, but still, Bennett definitely having a better trade here, like a one kill advantage trade. I still didn't understand the policy of, of the Titan to, uh, like being so inactive till the 13th minute like not u even using the Ravage passively setting up the stuns for those who just come in but it doesn't matter he has his blink dagger now eventually ready and oh there's a stun again of Skyrath Mage just nothing nothing they can do absolutely nothing and now they might actually go for the tier 1 tower there is no cliff available so yes Viper is gonna get that gold away Jesus, Jesus, so... How do we stand? 18-11, 15 minutes in, and only two tier, to tier 2 towers left. While, on the other side, you see it, 1, 2, and 3, all 3 tier 1 towers are absolutely up. I love this position, by the way. Like, I really love this, this ward. It's always giving nice vision here into the bottom lane, up and down, but... Well, let's see if it turns out to be interesting, because with the Tinker blinking always into the trees there, you actually have vision on this one, but... Wait, there are blinks coming out. Oh, what are those blinks supposed to mean? Like, Enchantress and Vengeful are saying, like... I don't know, that should have been a centimeter up or down, whatsoever. But anyway, Troll, farming now the jungle. His farm is actually quite bad. Like, I mean, face boots and a Pullman Shield for a safe lane Troll in a dual lane pretty much I don't know if that was really worth it I mean he really got very well shut down from the first spot which was on him to now but yeah he's also like really really scared here in the jungle they know the wiper is coming but they don't know if that's illusion or not but this is void not so scared after all yep the best conclusion is if you don't want to push right now you might as well just use your die advantage and go for Roshan that's what they do right now it's quite an easy task you have Empiric Aura you have someone who can tank it easily like the Viper with the Corrosive Skin and you have the Wave of Terror which is already level oh it's actually just level 1 but still it's fine for the first Roshan minus 3 means Roshan only has one armor left and that's that's all good so why not going for it 60 minutes in looking again at the crafts family actually uh, doing quite nice when it comes to experience. When it comes to gold, however, the, the graph remains or even goes a bit in favor for, for B5, but still. Let's see. Like, this this experience gain, it's quite interesting. Oh, is there a gush maybe here on the Skyrath Mage? No, it's not coming out. Titan, uh, not even bothering to slow. There would have been a second slow by the Enchantress, but no one to actually stun him. Rockets flying out. And no, for a central push, I don't think you have enough. But then again, maybe they just want to take out the Tinker. Macho Machine just stopped. Tinker coming in. Oh, let's see. There's the Ravage on the Tinker, as well as the Star Negative Earn Charge and Impetus Flying. Oh, nice bounce here, Chain Frost, but only two bounces. Like, it looked promising, but it was not. So they go for the Tier 2 tower while the Tinker is actually buying back. And now, what does he want to do with that? Oh, they want to go for something. But Magic Missile, now is he under focus. Nice Chrono here so far, but... Oh, they're already under focus. They are focusing right now the Viper, but... Oh, not even close. Viper Strike on the Troll. He's going down. That Lish, he is... 
getting the Aegis target, but sure, he's gonna die for it as well. The Tinker is going down, and now Skyrath Mage being slowed, poison attack, just one more hit, even the poison should do it. Double damage, of course, on a Viper helping there as well. This is also the tower. Viper, yes, you will get it with your double damage, obviously. The only one getting out of this brawl is the Faceless Void, and Jesus, I mean, Faceless Void... He has only a Midas, the Kronos are kinda okay-ish, Maelstrom comes out after this fight pretty much, like he only needs a 250 gold, but just one last out of tower left here for my family. And Bennett plus 5, they're doing a good job at the moment, I didn't, I didn't expect this to come, I really didn't expect this to come, because uh, just for the fact that all the time in a draft, I've been talking about, yeah, and Chrono, and into that Chrono there will be Martian Machines, and Rocket, and Laser, and Chain Frost, and Mystic Flare. Not a single time so far. Not a single time we have seen this coming. The Chrono Spheres were always nice, but you saw it in this fight. Chain Frost was already out. Like, Mystic Flare was not possible. So, it's... I don't know, it just doesn't work. Like, you pick such a draft, but you don't execute it. And that's that's the biggest problem at the moment for family, but this this game is far from over guys So hold on there like I might sound red negative right now, but family is striking back Oh chrono is not quite ready at all activating the nature attendance. He knows already there is the focus But let's see with the chrono one second black should just go the hell out of here Oh, and he, they get the kill they get at least the kill on the sky of match, but they're gonna pay for it they're gonna pay for it, but Viper is coming in. He's gonna focus here on that Lich. There is no Ravage. Still on cooldown, but the Tinker. The Tinker on the attack is nothing he can do. He's actually TPing out, and... Nope, it's not enough with the last Shockwave there. And Void, he has to go back. Is there anything to interrupt him? Nope, there's not. And a second one here. The, the Troll is also getting out. So, getting two supports, paying with three, and two of your cores are actually... Or actually, one of your cores and the two supports are going down. That's not good news for Bennett 5. So with this, we might actually see B5 going for more, even though the respawn time is relatively low for family. I mean, the Tinker is back in 20 seconds, it's not even enough to go high crown, and the Lich as well. Chainforce should be ready, but then again we also have a Ravage, so, well, with the Ravage it, it might be interesting. And let's see, whatever is next, just, I need a minute for my tea, Hefla tea. Hefla TV. Ah, that's good. Solo cast and my voice. Especially since I was out celebrating yesterday in the night. So my voice is still a bit... Uh. But either way, we see a first sign of life here, family, when it comes to going for the objectives. But to be honest, I don't think the troll alone will be enough. But there's rotation of the Wraith King. He has a Blink Dagger. Now let's see what's coming here. The, the Void just going for the tower, showing himself. Blacks. Oh, is there maybe a swap? No, he he went there with a time walk. But what is what's the Troll Warlord doing here? What the hell? It's the second time they have someone hiding here. Like he, nice way he was actually eating through all this. No wait, is this this way? Or this way? I don't know, but now he's just TPing out and again, Metro Spirit did not scout it because he didn't expect him to be there. They expected him to be, him to be already TP'd out. Which is an, under normal circumstances probably the right thing, but oh, there's a Chrono. But this is a solo Chrono just for Enchantress. That's kind of a desperation move. Like, that is a level 2 Chrono that's 100 second out while the enemy goes again with double damage and free people for your tier 2 tower. I really don't know if that's worth it, especially if I have a draft that is just focusing on that chrono and the external damage. So right now, if they want to, they might even go high crown. Only problem, of course, is that martial machine spam. That martial machine spam really makes it kind of awkward. Tinker, now he has actually the gold. In 5 gold, he has to go for uh, his blink dagger. I guess it's about time, 21 minutes. It's really about time, but even with the martial machine spam, they are going high crown. Double damage being used here still has some seconds left on it. They're already starting to do damage. Lish cross blast actually on the creeps, but it's still it's cleaving off the creeps obviously to surrounding targets. And I think uh, in the meantime pushing out other waves. Um, it seems like Bennett Five they want to go for like two lanes being pushed in. Who actually has that Aegis or had that Aegis? Was it Viper? I thought Viper used it already. Uh, what was was it me just being fooled and the sky and, and the Rave King going down and I just saw this animation but okay 
Like, Volvo told me H is being claimed right now, so I just assumed the Viper still had it. Either way, Viper is TPing out. They are falling back. I don't know if that's a mistake or not. So far the Rave King is tanking this, and that means they are 4 versus 5 if they want to, because they saw the Viper TPing out. Now there's the stun on the Troll Warlock. Is there anything? Tinker from the side. Is there any Ravage? Anything happening? So far, nice armor talk with the Magic Missile. It's gonna finish him off. And they're just going back, but Rave King, he doesn't want to die, obviously, but let's see what's happening here. I'm the target on, off, rockets, flying, but nope, it's not enough. They actually get away with this troll kill easily. Now there's even <laughs> a wild ring ripper just doing a tornado for shit and giggle, just farming that one creep. Look, that poor creep. Oh. <laughs> and the tink, I wanted to TP there. Oh, jeez. That was funny. Oh, but he's TPing bottom, and oh well, he gotta be careful. If any support would have been there, Viper, he won't care too much, to be honest. Like, I mean, there's rockets flying out, but look, he's standing marching machines. He's like, yeah, cool, that tickles. That really tickles. <laughs> I mean, he has a mech just in case, and it looks like he's going for a Heart of Tarask, which means he will not care at all. The next Rashan. Well, in about 20 seconds, we see what's actually going on. In the mid, they get rid of the uh, the Rave King, actually. But this is... Oh, actually, no. It's not a level 3 ultimate. This is a level 2 ultimate. That's... Okay, that's interesting. I thought the Rave King might be interested in, like, here and there, just uh, going for such YOLO plays when you have a level 3 ultimate, because it's a really low cooldown every minute. But, yeah, this is 160 seconds. So, now, let's see if we have any rotation. It's just Blacks coming in. But yep, they want to deny that tower and they might as well do it because there's a stun here and there's a defensive chrono. But the problem is there's a gush, anchor smash. It hits him, but the stick, the stick actually bought him time. Now he has another time walk, but he has no TP. Oh, actually he has a TP. Is there anything coming? Ravage being used, they get the kill. Like, the entire game this guy is holding back with the Ravages. Like, dying three times on the lane before he even rotated anywhere, even accepted his own death. Uh, without using the Ravage, now he's using it just for that Void kill, and I guess it's worth it. I mean, 45 seconds out still, that might open them space in the mid, but if they want to go for a fight here, then it's, of course, without the Ravage, and that's bad news. Like, we have the Rave King, he's gonna ding 16 on that creep wave after he denied the tower that is, of course, now uh, down. Well, they still have to wait a bit, one and a half minute or so, till his ultimate is coming back up, and then has a of course, more convenient cooldown with that one minute timer. <laughs> it's smiley too. <laughs> says, oh god, that troll is so poor. Yes, looking at that troll's farm. There's really not much coming. And I, I, I can't even understand the picks we see here. This is Cloth of Haste, Ripple Hammer. What is that? Like, Maelstrom on a troll? That is quite an interesting approach. Of course, attack speed, high chance to bash there. But overall, I don't know, having two Maelstroms is kind of occasion clash fights and whatnot. I guess the Warlock is also kind of happy about, like, that he can take rage form, range form and just DPS inside the Chrono. But then again, they never go for those setups. But oh, what the hell is the Red King doing here? Like, whoa, no stick being used, no nothing. He's just running into them. Was it even a smoke gang? I, I, I didn't even think so. Either way, he's going down, and of course, bad news for him, because his ultimate was still 20 seconds on cooldown, so... That's exactly what I said. His, like, little ballsy play in the mid that cost him his 160 uh, seconds ultimate before he's going anywhere else, like, just getting that little 16 done. Now he's dying because of it. Then again, if he died there with a 60 seconds ultimate, they would have just killed him again. This way, he's coming back, and they might actually be ready to defend that tier 2 tower, which... Might be the case, just because we have the Chronosphere, we should have them. It yes, it is ready, and tier two is waiting for your family. One big fat Chrono, one nice chain first. We might actually see it. Roshan timer, by the way. Oh, that was somewhere here. It was 20 seconds additional. Yet, yeah. I mean it spawns now, but I think it was like additional two minutes or so. So relatively okay-ish. It's daytime, so they just saw the Titans are coming from really far away, and they're heading off. They don't want to go for this. Tinker still busy to like, I don't know, push out <laughs> the creep wave so they don't reach the base here. And the void is going max. So your family, they just want to farm at the moment. They're really passive. And Bennett five, I guess the next Rashan is kind of needed, just for the simple fact that they want to go high ground and having this with 
uh, at ages, it's kind of needed. You kind of need this ages because in all this trouble and all this collateral damage into the chrono or whatever, if a good chrono is coming out, like one will go down and I think, I don't know if, if the Viper is getting it. I mean, so far the Viper is going to get his part of the Rask done and the ages is going to. The winner is... Uh, yeah, it is the Viper. Okay. It's really interesting that they're like, yeah, we don't care, like, we can just have the H's there on, on the crown, and yeah, we are not fearing that anyone picks it up. Tinker could have just blinked in, we have the Void who could have just blinked in, but I mean, they saw that the Void was at least bottom, so there was not much to fear still. Um, Bennett 5. The question is now what they do. Do they go for a dual push, two lanes into the high crown, or anything else? Now, old troll ultimate, he really wants to commit to that tower, but he doesn't get the tower acro off immediately. Oh, yeah, now he does. There's a rotation of the Rave King. Does he? No, he doesn't even try to find that troll. Okay. In the meantime, Black's also scouting might find actually the void, but that's even a dangerous thing. And oh my god, the Tinker! He was hit by the Wave of Terror, but now he doesn't have any vision. He needed a Wave of Terror being. Yeah, scouting Tinker right there, that case, oh my god, Enchantress again, there's the Mystic Flare, the first time we see this combo properly executed, easy kill on the Enchantress now, Bennett 5, 1 down and I don't know, oh my god, Tavo, Vlado, where did you TP in, now they just go for that Tinker, easy kill on him, so after all they still make a better trade, I mean sure Enchantress down, but who cares about the Enchantress? That's that's just a fact, that poor little thing. But oh, in the mid, there's just another face but he still has a time walk. Time walk is enough to get him actually on the high ground here. Now oh, do we have maybe something on the Sky of Match? No. Nope. Nothing's coming here. So net worth wise we still have the two cores of B5 leading, but the face destroyed really caught up as well as the Tinker, like the only one who is really in a horrible state is that troll. Like I mean that was a safe lane troll. Jesus Christ. So looking at the crafts experience wise then eventually uh, B5 took quite a nice lead but let's see when we look at gold 12k in 30 minutes okay that's that's actually looking quite good I think you shouldn't ask for more to go high crown and the Viper with the heart of Thrask if it's not getting interrupted by any whatever damage he can pretty much tank the tower and that's a good thing of course to have but we have to wait this chrono will come soon and it's nicely how they spread out one here one there one there one there and in the background we have the tight hunter so you see guys this is really hard for the void to get a proper chrono up here they have to bait out to have to have to get them out of the reserves into like neglecting the fact that they are standing strong right now for example we might actually see a double chrono with blacks being here a triple chrono so this might be interesting, but oh, is he going in? I can't even believe it. Yes, he's going on the faceless void, but now that's just too much damage. The Viper's still just doing well enough damage on a tower. Another stun here on the faceless void. And look, the harass on the tower is real. Like, they still have three minutes on the ages, so they shouldn't be afraid. Uh, the mech being used. Positioning at the moment, it's a bit more loose. So I'm still waiting for that chrono. Because if it happens, oh again, opening on the void, he's still in the same position, gosh, actually on him, there's the chrono, it's on two, and the Ravage in the background holding the entire team back from doing something more, the Scarif Mage going down, but he gets the Mystic Flare out before the Titan are actually dying as well as Blacks, but they pay with the Tinker, with the Scarif Mage buyback here, coming out by the Tinker, but still, it is real, Void is going down, also instant buyback, new rockets are flying, the two cores of B5 are still standing, doing all the damage, and now of course Troll without the ultimate, Void without the chrono, can't really do anything but Viper. He has still the ages and I don't know Rave King you should fight this in my opinion, but he does not they do not is there a stun coming? Yes, it's on the faces void, so he's stunned for now, but I think you have to abandon the Viper if he's not hitting then oh My god Viper is going down. This is a godlike 1300 gold and now the Rave King Okay, blink out. There's no TP no drum charges whatsoever, but I really thought they might have they should have taken that fight. I really thought they should have taken that fight. That was Tinker completely being out of mana, just right clicking. This was the Troll Warlord. They would have gotten the Troll Warlord kill for sure. As well as... Oh my god. What's going on?
Whoa, I can't even believe it. I'm back and I missed it freaking all. Fuck my life. I'm so sorry, guys. If there's still some people on the stream, then yes, this is freaking real. I don't know if, if this if the stream is gonna hold or not because um, I actually had a repair on my internet today here in my little mini studio and the, the Hungarian telecom they actually told me everything's fine everything is as it should be and they were like yeah yeah no problem you can go online you can stream you yeah, everything is fine oh. fucking bullshit nothing is fine again disconnects it's the second one in a row and it takes freaking ages till I receive another IP so I don't know what's going on but the stream should be online in just a second you should see it very much soon So I'm just trying to communicate that to you guys. Just have to re reload everything. So I hope something is coming through. I really hope my OBS is now streaming directly after it was directly on. Yeah, now it's actually it's reconnecting. So I think everything's fine. Either way, they went high ground. They got the melee racks. I didn't even see that, but there was a big return fight, and B5 actually lost this one. So this should be like a huge influence on the crafts there. And now I actually have to close the window as well. We have a smoke gank here in the enemy jungle, and let's see. The void is looking for something with the sky of mage together because it's just an easy thing to do with the mystic flare. The next Rashan, or it actually it got killed, so we have to see who got something. We have to update ourselves on. Okay. No. Roshan just respawned. Obviously when you reconnect the game you don't see the Roshan timer. So third Roshan is there. This is a Roshan with cheese. And well Let's see. Oh in the mid there's already the Mystic Flare, but nice swap out here off the Titan. He's using his stick, he's relatively full HP, but oh nice chain for us here, it's bouncing, but this was the last bound now. One hit on that guy of Mage. He's going down and this was a fail gank whatsoever. Nice reaction here by Mr. Blacks. That was awesome. That was just amazing. That was just good. This guy here, he just saved the day. Nice swap there. Titan is still alive. He's just gonna region up, especially with the urn charges coming out from the enchanters. They're gonna get the Roshan, and I guess then it's another step forward to the high crown. And now let's see, I just have to reload my browser as well. The cheese is going actually to the Viper, and who's getting the Aegis? Titan is getting the Aegis. Okay, that's an interesting one, I have to say. Like that he is getting the ages. Well, I guess if the if they really focus him in, in the chrono, that might of course be interesting. So we're looking at the crafts, and yes, family had like a huge, huge jump. Um, I don't know from what that actually came, but it is, it just happened, and that is the team fight. So we just assume in the second where I disconnected, <laughs> it was definitely an awesome fight for family, or maybe even two. So again, all apologies there, and the funny part is I can't even guarantee you guys if I disconnect again or not, because the technician told me everything is fine, everything is working as intended, apparently it's not. So business internet, but disconnecting, like, I wish I could sue them, and I wish there would be alternative, but unfortunately, no, there's not, either way, well, we should be back on track. And let's see, do they go high crown? Do they not go high crown? There has been split push by the Troll Warlord. The Troll Warlord uh, finished actually BKB after this amazing uh, return fights, apparently, in the mid. So you get quite some gold influx there. I mean, the two cores of B5 are still uh, okay-ish in lead. But yeah, Tinker... Well, the Tinker is, is really underwhelming as such. We have to see what's coming out next for him. He actually gets the Ethereal Plate done pretty much soon. There's 30 gold away from that, and we see another Smoke Gang here coming out by my family. Or your family. Depends. The perspective. Either way, so let's see what this is one is going. 41 minutes in here, and apparently they're just looking for the jungle, but they won't find anyone here because B5 is back to their half of the map. But I see some people still remained on the stream. So, again, for all those people who are still here, my apologies. So, let's see. The game the game is definitely interesting. I like the item choices come also coming out by, by my family, obviously. Except for that Maelstrom on the troll, which I'm not a big fan of. 
But I definitely like the, the Vladimir's on the Lish, boosting the, the, the entire team's damage as well as ammo, mana region, etc. And, well, let's see. I mean, with the Tinker having that ethereal plate, I don't even know if he wants to buy that ethereal plate because we might actually need that buyback money. We have to look at the buybacks anyway. And so far, nobody actually has cooldown, but a lot of people lack money to do it. And now we have the Void, yep, getting that tier 1 tower. That means, like, finally. Also, family, getting some more gold influx just by that. The Titan that came in tanks the tower a bit for whatever reason. Troll just defending, and they have nice vision here. With that Observer Ward, the rockets are flying all out, and they can hold them off for now. That's the biggest problem. Like, going high ground against March Machines is always kind of a hard thing to do. Also, faces Void. He has enough money for buyback, uh, I presume. 20 level 23, his Midas really works out, but. Yeah, the Rave King. The Rave King just going ham on that tower. Now Cliff being used and... Oh, that's a Chrono. But the Chrono is actually on the Tide Hunter as well. So swaps on the Viper. He has the cheese. He using the cheese. And now, of course, that's quite some business. Like, do we have a turnaround? There's the Viper Strike. And let's see. The stuns on the Void. Oh, nice one. The four stuff. They wanted to save him, but it's not enough to dominate the streak. He's actually going down. And Tide Hunter going really ham. But he has the Aegis. So he's, he's willing to die. But oh, there's the stun here on the Tinker. And let's see, I mean, he doesn't have he doesn't have his Ghost Scepter anymore. Now they get the Rave King, but of course also protected by everything. Oh, they're turning around. There's one setup here, but the Void, of course, with the buyback coming in. Viper Strike, as well as the stun on him. Meteorex is going down, so that's positive news. We have, of course, the Titan there as well coming back, but they can just go back. They, they got what they wanted to. That's the second set of racks they get. Oh, it's not even a set of racks, but of course, in the meantime, the Creeps actually killing that range, uh, that range racks. And also the Enchantress finished this one, so yes, it is complete. Two set of racks and family couldn't do anything. They spent only the buyback of the Void there, but the Chronosphere with the swaps, it just did not work out. Just too tanky. They didn't focus the Titan because he had the Aegis. I guess that was the right, right choice to do, but they couldn't finish the Viper. And in the end, Reincarnation, Aegis and Cheese, those three things, all of them have been used and very effectively so but still one rex is still there and family might still turn this around i mean they're not far away when it comes to farm whatnot but of course they have a big big problem and that that are this problem is called creeps creeps pushing in all the time so pushing them out with one hero is a good thing but you are vulnerable to ganks Pushing them out in two lanes, that's quite hard, even though a Tinker is relatively easy to make that happen. Now, oh, that's of course good news. Invisibility rune on the one who is nice for the initiation here. Black's finding one. And let's see. Smoke gang coming up. And the ethereal plate is out. Tinker, not enough money for buyback, I assume. Nope. He needs a tiny bit more. But do they find something with the smoke gang? That's the question. The troll would join the fray here, but no, nope, they won't find anything, even though maybe the Titanter, maybe the Titanter might be now on the way. We have 20 seconds to the Ravage, but oh, look at, look at Blacks. Oh, there's the initiation here on the Sky of Mage. Now he's coming in, but Mystic Flare doing a ton of damage, four stuff forward. We might actually get the Vengeful Spirit down here, but now Plank Dagger, no, he's absolutely safe. Easy kill on the Sky of Mage, but... Killing a Scarab Mitch is just not enough, especially because he has... No. Never mind. Actually, no. Yeah, he has buyback. So in case they want to go high ground, there would be still the Scarab Mitch available. But by the time they would reach high ground, he's down anyway. So let's see what's happening. If they really want to go for a central fight, they might actually have a bad fight. Because last time you guys saw, I mean, the fight were just was just one. Because we had ages, we had reincarnation and the cheese working for them. But this time, they would go just, you know, without any Cheetorinos on the high crown. And that might be, of course, a problem. The Tinker is pushing out some creeps uh, here. But the problem is even Martian Machines, a double Martian Machines, is not strong enough to get the creeps down here at the moment. And they're just working their way up. So they just keep on farming that, that jungle. But let's see. I mean, Roshan, in about a minute, exactly a minute here, we know when Roshan is gonna spawn and wait dire structures have been fortified oi caramba someone someone just pressed the wrong button and I even assume it's vengeful spirit because the courier is going 
was just microed, so I assume <laughs> someone just pressed the wrong hotkey. Either way, I like what they do here. Like this, this courier to scout Roshan out all the time. In about 30 seconds, we know when Roshan is coming back. I wonder about the timer. Is it full three minutes? Is it not? But let's see. Maybe we have to go here. The Lish? The Rish? Really going ham here. But I mean, he has a four stuff. He doesn't fear too much. And a Lish might also be a good bait to get the chrono in. And let's see. Just 10 seconds left. Roshan. I mean, they might just push the wave in here, keep them busy. While the other two lanes are pushing, I mean, this one will soon cross the river. This one is already going with two double range creeps. This one is going to reach the base already, which means even the illusions and stuff. But the Viper, the Viper is just standing here. And now, this really smells like disconnect. This smells like disconnect. There's Mystical Flare on the Viper, he's back, but yep, he just survived. Swap out now as well, and oh, let's see, there's the Chrono. The Chrono is coming on two. Lax is already going down, but let's see, they go ham here on the Wraith King. There's some bounces, and he's actually going down, but Void, will they turn around on that Void? Maybe that's enough, but oh, there's a stun on the Tinker. They still don't get that kill on the Void. I can't even believe it now. Oh, what was that? That Impetus flying, like he's going down, Skyrath Mage, he has a buyback if they want to. Roshan, when does he respawn? Oh, that's a very long respawn time, and that's almost maximum, that's almost 11 minutes. So, let's see if they want to go for it. At the moment, they have a huge problem, and those, his problem is called creeps. Here, quadruple range creeps, quadruple range creeps, it's just pushing in, like if they don't defend. If they don't defend, these gonna do so much damage, but here, Ethereal Blade, and he's still alive, I can't even believe it. Stun on the Troll Warlock, and he might actually get out, or Impetus flying here on the Troll, so what direction do they go? Even Troll Ultimate used, but for nothing. The Tier 4 Towers, so much damage already, like, guys, what you doing? Your family, you can't really do that, but there is the Chrono ready if he wants to, but, oh, Viper Strike, now he's inside the Chrono. Oh, the Axe helping there as well, but there will be the stun of the Troll Warlock. There will be the mischance, but now once they turn around, maybe getting the troll warlord. Nope, they're gonna get the Lish. Lish is sacrificing himself there. So the Tinker finally in the mid defending, but tier 4 tower going down and they keep on just pushing. While Roshan is gonna spawn in approximately a minute. So they still have Roshan as a backup plan, but now they don't even need to. With the Lish down... I guess they could go. They don't have to fear anything. At least no Frost Harass, no Chain Frost as well. This is bad news. They might really do the slow siege here. So let's see. They have even even enough money for buybacks on the Skyrath Mage that is. There is some Harass coming out here. Tinker is gonna eat the Viper Strike. And yes, as, as soon as they are here grouped up around this tower, we have again mid creeps pushing in, top creeps pushing in. This is again a double wave. And a triple wave. Make this, yeah? Make this a triple wave coming in. They really have a problem. Tinker is the one who's gonna defend it, but yeah, Rave King. He just keeps on pushing. Keeps on pushing while well, Roshan. Five seconds. There we go. I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna scout out the Roshan, fall back, take the ages, take the cheese, wait for the ultimates to come up again, or they should be up by now. Like, how is the Ravage? Where's the Ravage? I'm blind. There's the Ravage. Yeah, it is up again. So, Ravage coming out in just one second when we looked at it. And 15 minutes in, just by family, there's too much pressure. Roshan spawned, they go directly for it. And this means high crown for sure. So let's see, Roshan getting. Look at the minus armor on him. Jesus Christ, this is Gush, Medallion, and Wave of Terror. Roshan is not having anything, but oh, they find a Titan to end. The troll wants to go in, BKB, oh no, who's using the cheese, who's getting the cheese, courier being killed, cheese being picked up, mechanism on the crown, that was really a misplay there, oh, Mystic Flare, but it's not doing any damage, but now, of course, the void is coming in, this is a big, big throw, still items on the ground, they're not destroying the items, for some reason, they're going for the direct approach, there's the stun here, on the leash, he might go down, armlet on, Viper is getting that kill on the faces void, over time, so they even save their items. He is protected by the HS. The Courier is gonna pick up that Morbid Mask as well as the Mac. I can't even believe it. And all that was without the Tinker, for example. Tinker wasn't even there. And wow.
Wow, wow. So the Chronosphere only being used to get those two supports down. And who actually... The Cheese is still up on the Troll Warlock. Does he have a buyback? No. He does not have a buyback. So all he did is like... Conquer the Cheese. And now he's not even available for the push that is to come. That is bad news. This is bad news. Big time. And now they're just going for the tower. There's still a cliff available to just buy some time. But yes, in the meantime, tier 4 tower just fell. And this base is just falling apart at the moment of my family. They can't really do anything. They can't do anything. That's the biggest problem. They have to wait for the next chrono. Chrono is done. The KBs are done. Oh, <laughs> the Viper just getting that random kill on the Scarif Mage. He's buying back Viper. Of course, he's still protected by the Aegis, but oh my god, the Ravage is coming out. So Viper just going ham at the moment here on the Tinker. He's going down. The Aegis being used. Void is down. This must be GG. Even though, well, we have still have a Cheese here, but look at it. The Rex are down. Mega Creeps are spawning. And Cheese being used. I don't think this is happening. Nope. I really don't think so. Look at them crits. Now the missed chances and whatnot coming out. For some reason, the Troll's still available, but Woo, guys, what a game. Family, nice try to come back whatsoever, but like on the Dire side here, Bennett plus 5, they just had a much superior game. Better control of pretty much everything. So yes, it is over. It is a GG. Congratulations, Bennett plus 5. Nice performance, and we're back in about 5 minutes with game number 2, guys.